After preparing the final balancing of the rhombic Stirling engine in the last videos, it is now time to dynamically measure the unbalance in the engine test bench with a built-in acceleration sensor. The measured values can then hopefully be used to balance the Stirling engine very well. First, I calculated the theoretically required counterweights. Then, as shown, it was unfortunately necessary to manufacture heavier counterweights. Exactly the calculated countermass is screwed onto the cranks and the Stirling engine is installed in the test stand. The electronics are not yet fully operational as I still don't have Wi-Fi in the new hobby shed. The motor runs much more smoothly straight away. Next test with a little more counterweight brings no improvement. Less counterweight leads to stronger vibrations. The test series confirmed the theoretically balancing calculations and now I want to try to gradually increase the engine's power. Something is wrong. The engine stops at high revolutions and high heat and can no longer be started continuously. All the running surfaces show scuff marks, which means there is a problem with the alignment or the piston clearance is too low. So I turn out the bores a little and lightly grind the pistons. I then reinstall the Stirling in the test bench. With a larger piston clearance and unchanged piston rings, the compression is significantly worse. Despite the lower friction, the power output is also significantly lower than before. I will now preload the piston rings more with the spring steel bands, improve the alignment of the pistons and, if necessary, produce new piston running surfaces. Of course, once again, there are many problems on the way to more power from the Stirling engine. I hope this doesn't annoy you too much. I hope to find simple solutions and then be able to report quickly on test runs with higher performance. As always, I look forward to your comments, suggestions and criticism. Many thanks for watching.